Mortal Kombat, on the whole, is primarily a character-driven franchise. You basically have various factions making alliances and leveraging their power to achieve certain goals, often the elimination of opposing factions that threaten their own pursuits, whether these factions include heroes, villains, or anyone in between. After all, the foundation of the Mortal Kombat series lies in tournaments, and thereby sanction the invasion and absorption of other realms. Naturally, Mortal Kombat is a story about powerful people or groups of people fighting and seeing who wins. Rarely is the goal the possession or ownership of something like a piece of territory or an item, but perhaps the most notable exception to this principle is the Amulet of Shinnok. The Amulet of Shinnok is an incredibly powerful magical item that can easily draw the attention of any character. The Amulet of Shinnok is an item that is concentrated with the essence of Shinnok. The heroes most definitely want it out of the hands of the villains, and certainly away from people who would use it for its true purpose. Why? Well, we will explain that in our video on the Amulet of Shinnok and what lies in its future after Mortal Kombat 11. If one realm's warriors win 10 consecutive Mortal Kombat tournaments against another realm's warriors, then invasion is permitted. Disobedience to rules is frowned upon. During the end of Mortal Kombat 2011, Raiden realizes that Shao Kahn has defied the rules at the moment he steps into Earthrealm and begins his plan to absorb Earthrealm into Outworld. And so, Raiden is powered up to kill Shao Kahn. Interestingly, Shao Kahn remarked once during the story mode that he was supposed to obey the rules, but perhaps he had a lapse in judgment after so many of Earthrealm's heroes had been slain at the end of Mortal Kombat 2011. Shao Kahn's act was impermissible because Outworld, the realm that he represents, had not won 10 consecutive tournaments against Earthrealm. Before continuing, it is worth noting that there are two continuities in the Mortal Kombat series, the Midway continuity and the Netherrealm continuity. Shinnok maintains his role as a villain in both continuities, and his amulet too is portrayed as immensely powerful, but the paths of both differ noticeably between both continuities. In the Midway continuity, it is stated in the prologue to Mortal Kombat 4 that Raiden warred with Shinnok after Shinnok created the amulet, and somehow barely won against Shinnok. Shinnok wanted to conquer Earthrealm, and so he used his amulet to weaken the boundaries between realms, and thus he could enter Earthrealm. Though the war was costly, Raiden would eventually win, and so Shinnok would then be banished to Netherrealm. His amulet was sealed away and stayed hidden for millennia. Bi Han, who assumed the name of Sub-Zero before his younger brother, Kwai Liang, would do so for all Mortal Kombat games after the first one, after the former is slain by Scorpion and then reborn as Noob Saibot, is tasked with retrieving a map to the amulet of Shinnok in the spin-off game Mortal Kombat Mythologies Sub-Zero. Unbeknownst to him, Scorpion was contracted to achieve the same goal, and the two would later fight during the game, with this fight resulting in Scorpion's death at Bihan's hands. The two were contracted to retrieve the map by Quan Chi, an evil sorcerer who is part of the Brotherhood of Shadow. Quan Chi himself is portrayed as a subordinate to Shinnok, as Shinnok is responsible for making him much stronger than he already was. Bihan ultimately does retrieve the amulet and deliver it to Quan Chi during the events of Mythologies. Mythologies predates the first Mortal Kombat game, though we would not see the amulet or Shinnok until Mortal Kombat 4. In this game, Shinnok has escaped from banishment to the Netherrealm, and he, along with Quan Chi and the other members of the Brotherhood of Shadow, would set out to support Shinnok in his bid to conquer all of the realms. His escape is made possible by Quan Chi's possession of his amulet. However, Shinnok and his allies would eventually be defeated by the heroes, and Shinnok would be banished once again to the Netherrealm. Quan Chi would maintain possession of Shinnok's amulet throughout this continuity. He gave Shinnok a duplicate amulet at the end of Mythologies, while keeping the real one for himself. During the events of Mortal Kombat Deception, which follows Mortal Kombat 4, it is revealed that another villain, the Dragon King Onaga, has been seeking out Shinnok's amulet to possess control over the realms by placing it in an altar in the Nexus, a gateway hub between realms. The amulet otherwise is not seen again in this continuity. In the Netherrealm continuity, Shinnok's amulet figures significantly in Mortal Kombat 10 in particular. During the events of Mortal Kombat 2011, Quan Chi is already in possession of the amulet and is working with Shao Kahn, but in the epilogue for the game it is revealed that Quan Chi has been aligned more closely with Shinnok rather than Shao Kahn. 
Shinnok has been directing Quan Chi to lead Shao Kahn to his death by suggesting to Shao Kahn that he conquer Earthrealm. Supporting Shao Kahn's efforts against the heroes has led to the deaths of many good characters, all of which were resurrected by Quan Chi as evil revenants to serve him. Shinnok, in the beginning of Mortal Kombat 10, would then seek to conquer Earthrealm by taking over the Jinsei Chamber, which houses the life force of Earthrealm, and corrupting it. Shinnok would ultimately be defeated by Johnny Cage, and Raiden would use Shinnok's amulet to trap him within it upon his defeat. The amulet would then come to be in possession of the special forces, but it would be taken away from their possession due to the machinations of Kano. A great deal of Mortal Kombat 10 revolves around the leading factions, namely Quan Chi's army, the heroes, Kotal Kahn's army, and Melina's army, seeking possession of the amulet. After being stolen from the special forces, the amulet comes into the possession of Melina, who uses it against Kotal Kahn's army in Chapter 2. We see firsthand its capabilities here. Energy fired from the amulet can vaporize or greatly weaken opponents, but it would drain the health of the user. It's depicted as power that comes with a cost outside of its intended users. Eventually, Melina is slain by Devora, a lieutenant of Kotal Kahn's, but while Kotal would think that he is now in possession of the amulet, Devora is then revealed to be a double agent working for Quan Chi and maintains possession over the amulet herself. Quan Chi himself is eventually captured by the special forces, thus complicating his efforts to free Shinnok from the amulet. In a climactic sequence of events, Scorpion takes over the Special Forces camp so that he can kill Quan Chi after he learns that the Sorcerer is responsible for slaying his family and the Shirai Ryu clan that he belongs to. And moments before Scorpion beheads Quan Chi, Devora tosses the amulet to Quan Chi so that he can utter an incantation that will release Shinnok from the amulet. Shinnok is then freed and goes on to wage another war against Earthrealm. He would fuse the amulet with himself and take on a more powerful, corrupted form. But this next war that he wages is again thwarted by the Earthrealm heroes, with him being defeated by Cassie Cage and this defeat forcing the retreat of the evil revenants. Later after his defeat, Raiden, corrupted by the influence of the evil energy that he had absorbed while purifying the Jinsei Chamber and full of anger at the cost that had to be paid to protect Earthrealm, beheads Shinnok. He would continue to wear the amulet as a symbol of his anger and determination to protect Earthrealm. This concludes the greater share of the amulet's story thus far in the Netherrealm continuity. In Mortal Kombat 11, we are introduced to Dark Raiden, who uses red instead of blue lightning and wears the amulet as a threat and a symbol of his intention to protect Earthrealm at any cost. He even uses it against a Netherrealm army in Chapter 1. However, after Kronika's timequake in Chapter 2, Dark Raiden disappears, displaced by the Raiden from the past. This is because two incarnations of Raiden cannot occupy the same space and time in Mortal Kombat. The Raiden from the past that is summoned naturally distrusts the power of the amulet, but finds himself tempted by its power. He does eventually use it when his temper reaches its peak. This is after the present timeline Scorpion is slain by Devora, and the Scorpion from the past asks for the cooperation and trust of the heroes in a bid to turn a new leaf after hearing the present Scorpion's dying words. Raiden is unhappy with the heroes' situation against Kronika at the time, and additionally so with Scorpion's death, and is unwilling to trust the words of Scorpion from the past. After Scorpion of the Past fights with Raiden, Raiden fires an energy bolt from the amulet, and his anger escalates as his eyes turn red and he fights with Liu Kang. It owes to his restraint and a vision that he receives of all of the instances of him fighting and killing Liu Kang in other timelines that his better judgment takes over as he casts aside the amulet and his lightning returns from red to blue. That scene marks the last use and known instance of the Amulet of Shinnok in Mortal Kombat 11. It's not clear what happened to it since then. Johnny Cage didn't join the assault on Kronika's lair at the end of the story mode, so perhaps he watched over it. It would be greatly unfortunate if somehow the Amulet was simply left unattended and a new villain retrieved it. The amulet apparently wasn't within the interests of Kronika or her associates. It may serve as an interesting plot device in the future, a symbol of temptation for power at all costs, indulged by a character's worst moment if they are a hero. 
As we have seen in Mortal Kombat 11's story mode with Jax, and with both Raiden and Liu Kang's stories throughout the Netherrealm continuity, the heroes are not so immaculate so as to never do unwise or evil things. Nevertheless, at best, we can understand the amulet as having a general purpose of the temptation of power, rather than having a more significant and specific story role in the future, should the next game's story continue after Mortal Kombat 11. Tell us what you expect next for the Amulet of Shinnok. Should the next Mortal Kombat game's story continue after Mortal Kombat 11, or do you prefer a reboot? And as always, thanks for watching. And that about does it for this video. If you enjoyed what you watched and want to see more from Gaming Bolt, you can always hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon next to it. That way you will never miss any of our videos.